Model engineering for beginners. Some types of stainless steel are very hard and quite difficult to work with. In this video the plan was to make a set of four Land Rover side window supports to replace the rusty ones. I was having a bad day owing to being woken up too early by a phone call from Australia and it got a whole lot worse. This is the condition of one of the window bolts. One end is threaded 8mm and the other one is threaded 10mm. And this one I had to cut off because the rusty nut on the end was immovable. The first thing I'm going to do is check the dimensions. This is 10.24, it's supposed to be 10mm, but quite a lot of this is rust. When ferrous metals get rusty, they do get bigger, but the rust is not strong at all. The nuts were easily removed from all the other fixings apart from the one I've just shown you. This one was rusty, but not quite so bad. It measured 9.94mm when I cleaned off the rust. I bought two pieces of stainless steel from Amazon, and these both measure 10mm. I marked the approximate positions with a felt tip pen when I need to cut this steel, and I found out that it was a bit longer than I needed, which is a good thing. I always buy my metal from Blackgates Engineering, but they didn't have any that was 10mm thick, hence the visit to Amazon. The first thing to do is to cut the pieces of stainless steel to the right size, or nearly the right size, and it immediately became apparent that this was very hard stainless steel. It took a lot of cutting on the bandsaw and an awful lot of pressure to stop the blade from rubbing. This is 304 stainless steel bar and my friend Andrew from Model Engineering Adventures on YouTube tells me that it is very hard stuff. I soon found that out when I started to machine it. It just doesn't feel right, the tool seems to dig into the metal. I've never come across this phenomenon before. It cuts all right really and you get a good finish. But later on in these sequences, I did break the tool tip, which is unusual, and I don't like the finish on the end. This is nothing like the stainless steel that I turned in the last Model Engineering for Beginners episode. This is where I broke the tool tip. I was nearly at the end of the turning process, and I pressed the tool into the work, and the tip snapped off. The carbide tip was still cutting, but in a very odd way. I soon ended up with four pieces of stainless steel, all the same length as the original window fixings. Here I'm taking some measurements from the original bits. This part, for instance, needs to be turned down to 8mm in diameter. So here we go, new tool tip, plenty of lubricant, and it's cutting beautifully. Normally I would turn all the parts to the correct dimension before threading them, but this was the exception to the rule, because I didn't think they were going to thread very well. In no time at all, a test cut on the end to 8mm was the order of the day, and I cut all the way down. So now I have the basic shape of one of the window fixings, well, almost, when this cut's finished. And as you can see, from a turning point of view, it seems to be OK, although I have noticed that it's banding somewhat, shiny bits and dull bits. Now the part is more or less the same size as the original. I held the original part against the piece of stainless steel and made a felt tip pen mark to show me how far to thread the part 8mm at this end. Now the fun begins. I'm trying to thread the 8mm part with no success whatsoever. I'm having to do it under power in the lathe because I cannot physically turn either the chuck or the tailstock die holder by hand. The die refused to engage with the piece of stainless steel. This could be that the die is blunt, but look what happened. No thread, it just turned the piece of steel to a smaller diameter. At this stage I thought, well there's nothing to lose, I'll see what happens at the other end. Here I've turned the part around in the chuck, clamped it very firmly, and applied some superheated steam oil as a cutting lubricant. This normally works but in this case, once again, I could not cut the thread by hand. I engaged back gear and slowly and carefully cut the thread, and it was going OK, until the build-up of swarf inside the die started to cut the metal as well. The fit was quite good, which is a surprise, because I'd opened the die as far as I could, and this nut should be tight on this thread, but it isn't. Some viewers may be thinking, well, why don't you just screw cut the thread? Years ago, when I was a beginner, 
All I managed to do was cut a strand of DNA. So I never pursued screw cutting. I always used taps and dies to very good effect normally. I gave up with the stainless steel. It was far too hard. Instead, I used a piece of 10 mm studding. Turned one end down to eight millimeters and here I'm threading this using an eight millimeter die. The same die that would not work on the stainless steel, but it's okay on this. It's worth mentioning that this studding is also quite hard, but nowhere near as hard and tenacious as the 304 stainless steel was. Here I'm cleaning up the end using a file and some wet dry sandpaper just to get a better finish. This is not perfect, but it will be strong and it will do the job. And there is a definite bonus to using threaded rod. Before I fit the windows in place on top of the doors, I can fill the main thread with a good quality grease and that will stop the rust. And also make it easier to remove the window tops should I need to. I've made a mark where I need to part off the piece of studding. This has definitely not been a good day. My small parting tool wasn't up to the job even on this studding, which is a good thing because it means the studding is hard and also strong. I eventually cut the piece of studding using the bandsaw and it was far easier than cutting the stainless steel. Here I'm just finishing the end and rounding it slightly so it's not sharp. All I have to show for a couple of hours in the workshop is just one fixing for the windows. To finish off a perfectly bad day, I bought this via eBay and I thought the Defender writing was just painted on, but no, it's actually laser cut very well too. I do not require the Defender word to be anywhere near my old Land Rover. It does use some Defender parts, but not with Defender written all over them. I like the voltmeter, the USB outlet and the main power outlet. I've bought a blank plastic backplate to mount them on. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.